Okay, so back in this level, let me just rerun this to make sure I remember how it all works. I guess I don't need the Pro Builder window open anymore. I've gotten used to it hanging out there, though. So here we are. We were set up. Oh, I didn't bring a controller. I knew I'd miss something. Okay. Yeah, grab me the just grab me that white one with the white cord if you wouldn't mind. It's just it's just in there. As long as you're not disturbing somebody. I don't know. Um, so I've got yeah. So we've got two nav mesh agents doing different things. The skull just follows me. I've got the uh, the cowboy is now patrolling three spots. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, and then I've got I didn't fix the camera for this guy, but he's moving around using the number keys. The guy who starts on the red platform. And I don't know why he drifts, but whatever. So um, that's going on. We might get to this. We might not. I'll probably just go at it until. So let's set up for now. Um, we can do it with the split screen on. Let's set up a camera that's going to follow us around um, and display in the world. So let's create another camera. We've already got four cameras in the world. What's one more? So let me just go ahead and do this. I'm going to, I'm just going to save this as a different scene because I might want to clean it up a little bit so we can see my stuff. So call it level I'm going to get rid of these these other cameras. So I'm just going to turn off the cowboy camera. Turn off the skull tracker camera. I'll take my second player completely out of the game. Now what that leaves me with is this. So I just got to fix that. So we're back to first player. I just got to fix his camera. Back to starting at zero, zero and going the full length and the full width. So, boom, we're back, single player view. All right, um, those are all off. So I'm gonna create first, um, what do I wanna do? I think I'm gonna make it just a little pole here. Set up a security camera up on a cylinder, just so we can see it, so it makes sense. So make a cylinder here. Roughly thereabouts. And that'll be the pole for my camera. And then I'll make the cube. That'll be my camera. It'll be a really big camera. Just to help us visually, um, because we don't see cameras in our world. But this will be this will be cooler, I think, if I can grab it. Okay, so I'll move this guy. He's our camera. He's our really, really big, dumb camera, but he's a big camera. And we'll put him here. And you know what I might even do is put a cone between them so it looks like he's balancing on something. Just because I feel like being somewhat creative. Make a cone over here. I should not have done that in orthographic view. I'll do it here. There we go. I got a cone for it to balance on. What is all this? Just me being silly, but I want it to make sense in my world. Roughing this guy into place. I don't even have pro grids on. I can turn that on and make my life easier. Why not? Okay, so I'll, let me start by, I should have the follow script. Um, now that I'm looking at this, let me rescale this guy. So I, 
he's going to follow with his eye coming out this way. So let me do that. Just scale him so he looks proper. Whoa. All right, there's my camera. Okay, so. The follow player. And then I'll give him the player, and let's just make sure that works. So it'll look like he's looking at us. Wrong follow play. Okay, that is the uh, that's that's a different script. <laughs> That's the that's the script that we want on our um, HUD cam. Yeah, so he's he's taking my X and Z, and then he's keeping his own original Y. So that's the wrong follow. What did I have on that goofy treasure chest? Look at player. That makes more sense than following. All right. You ever write too many scripts? Hopefully someday. Someday you will. Yeah, no, it's it's better to have a lot of little scripts than one big massive script. Okay, so this guy should look at me now. Yeah, let me stand there. Let me see if I can just do some crazy wall jumps. No. Yeah, honestly, he's, he's doing such a good job of looking at me. Okay, let's just say he's doing his job. All right. So that's working. All right, so let me come in here and find where that guy's at. Let me go ahead and make the cube and the cone, children of the cylinder, and actually name this something so I know it's how. My camera pole, the cube is my camera mesh and as a child of that I want to create a new camera so right click I'm going to create camera and let's call them security cam all right so he exists and let me just see what he's doing kind of position him at the end there He's looking out along that z-axis. That's perfect. That's what we want. Um, I think even being in there, since the uh, the mesh and all the faces are one-sided, it doesn't matter if the camera is inside of it because it's not going to render the back of that face. But keeping it here makes more sense. Okay, so I've got a camera. Um, I need to set him instead of being... Do I have a camera? There he is. Uh, instead of looking at... Where am I at? Target display, graphic setting. Oh no, it's the, it's the, okay, I know what I'm, I'm doing. I'm confusing the camera with the, with the uh, canvas I need to set up later. So for now, I'll leave this guy. Let me set up uh, a big TV to show what this guy, should, what this guy's uh, looking at. So um, I will again go back to Pro Builder and I'll just make a big box for now. and then try to get it where I want it. Okay, that's a start. So I'm just I'm just making a uh, a TV screen here. So I'm going to want him to be scales weird. Oh, because I'm scaling, I'm scaling the original shape. Whatever. 
you know what? Forget Pro Builder. Uh -huh. It's going to make a box. Okay, so I got a Q. There we go. Now I can work with this. Uh, the Z, I'm going to go ahead and make uh, 16. Not 156, 16. And then the Y by 9. It's our 16 by 9 TV. And those are meters, so that's definitely something that's not going to fit in your living room. But still cool to have. All right, so it'll sit there. There's going to be my TV. That's just the mesh. Again, it's like the camera mesh that I made. Um, now, let me give this guy, let me call him screen, do more level setup than anything. Um, I'm going to see if I can give him a child UI. And what we really need is a raw image. Sweet. So, screen gave me a canvas, gave me a raw image. Canvas, as we know, there's my raw image, um, usually just fits my entire screen and then lay stuff out, like this new text that's going to tell me how many shots I fired. So, I've got a canvas here. Here's what I need to do. I need to change this render mode to world space. Now it exists in the world um, and not pasting itself to my screen like a HUD. So I'm going to reset its position. Can I reset that here? Perfect. And so he is at zero, zero, zero in relation to its parent, that 16 by 9 screen. And by default, oh, because he's a child. All right, let's move him out this way. Stop being a child. There we go. It's the raw image. Never mind. That's what I messed up. Okay. Leave him there. So the canvas, I'm going to make him 16 by 9. And those, those units match the meters in my world. And I probably need to rotate him this way by 90. Let's see how that works. I think my canvas is now sized properly, but the raw image inside of him is still 100 by 100. And so the raw image is what I'm actually going to render to. So I'm going to go to that raw image child, and I'm going to hit Alt and click on this guy right down here. And now he should be fitting corner to corner inside there, and he's still not. He's still too large. Try this one. Maybe the canvas is still too big. Yeah, I think that's why I tried to move it out earlier because I think it is it's, it was inheriting the scale of the uh, other thing. Yeah, and so it took that as scale, and it's taking that the scale times the size. All right, there we go. Now he should be in there. Yeah, that was my fault for setting him up as a child right away. So anyway, we've got him in here. Um, and there's our screen, and we're just kind of roughly getting it on there. So, here's going to be the, the fun part. That raw image um, is going to need a texture. So I'm going to come out here to my Assets folder here, um, and I've already created a, one for uh, a test run. So I'm going to go Create, and I'm going to create a render texture. And I've got a list. Thereabouts. There we go. So I'm going to create a render texture. We'll call it security footage, whatever makes the most sense. Um, and he's not doing anything yet. But I'm going to set this up so my, my raw image is going to show the render texture of security footage. And I'm going to come to my security camera um, and tell him that security footage is his target. So already we can see what it's looking at. And I've got a screen inside looking at, and that's, that's the setup. I mean, that's it. So let's check this out. Let's 
trying to look down on me. So yeah, it's definitely tracking me. Maybe we should have him just track the skull. There I am. And that security camera just following me everywhere I go with that simple look at script. Crazy, right? Yeah, fun stuff. So you can not, you know, you don't always have to set it up as a giant 16 meter wide um, drive in movie screen, but see lots of uses for this for smaller security cameras again like give your player an iphone or a smartphone and it's they're getting some video footage from somewhere across the the map uh, a lot of crazy stuff we can do with this but that render texture is really where it's at and then the world space canvas um, world space canvas is something you need to remember anyway if you ever go into creating vr because what happened to that i ran out of water because uh, in VR, we should never render right onto someone's eyeballs. So everything should be a world space in VR. But yeah, it's a cool, th cool thing we can do. All right. While I've still got your attention, sort of. Um, that's the security cam setup. I want that in one of your levels, whatever one makes sense. Um, tracking the player makes sense to me, but if you want your security camera to look at something else, that's fine. But use that look at script so it's following, moving, watching something. Um, I want to show the the script that I got on Dumb Cowboy, who needs to be re renamed now, because now he's a smarter cowboy. Except for that follow script. We didn't even need any script for the, for the security camera. So I've got um, AI, because I've got it on Nav Mesh Agent. So this is, this is all this typical nav mesh agent stuff we had before. Now I declared a new public enum um, or enumeration inside my class. All this did was make a new variable type. So I've got a new variable called patrol state. And we talked about this possibly, we could be, think of it as a multi-part Boolean. One of these might be true. And usually only one. Definitely only one. Um, under the covers, look at that. Patrol state go to A is actually zero. Go to B is one, go to C is two. So that's why it's called an enum. It's literally just zero based array of numbers. However many we put in there, um, that's really what they're doing. We give them good names so that we can use them for cool things like states, um, other things. So my patrol state um, for this guy, he should always either be going to point A or going to point B or going to point C. Um, and then I've got transforms that correspond to all those um, that I have, I have given to, to the thing. So he knows that point A is this point A cube, point B is this cube. And I can show you where those are at in the world. You could. You could. Um, I was just kind of gently extending what we've done before with the, with the giving it transform. So, so uh, I went with RGB. So red, um, and these, they're, I could have just used empty transforms, but I gave them visual um, cubes. So I made a cube, colored it red, and gave it a trigger box collider. He is point A, and I passed him in as point A to my guy. Green is my point B, and this little blue guy over here is point C. You don't have to have visual indicators. Uh, you just have empty transforms, empty with box collider triggers on them. Um, you could have it be physical things like go to this door, go to this, whatever, whatever things you want to pass in. So I set those up. Um, and then I've got privately, I've got three points. I don't want to remember all three at the same time. So I'm just telling that guy, whatever, whatever I told you is the current target. That's where you're going. So I've got this private transform here. That's current target that he's always heading to. And then all this did was set up a new thing. Like I declared what an int was. And so I declared a thing called patrol state. Well, he needs his own variable uh, of that type. So he's got state. So starts the same thing. I get agent and then an update. I'm switching on that state. 
So I get my local variable state, which is of the type patrol state. And then this switch case is, I mean, it's really like a, an if else, and we're just checking for one of these things being true. Uh, since only one's ever gonna be true or zero, um, then we get this, this thing. So in the case of patrol state A is true, then all I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, my current target is A. Okay, this is happening all the time in update. We could probably clean this up, but this is this works. So in A, I'm checking, I mean, in update, I'm checking my state. If the state that someone told me is I'm supposed to go to A, then I'm saying, hey, point A is my current target. And then to get out of a case, I hit a break. Um, and then none of this other stuff even gets evaluated once I found which, which case in my switch case is true. Same thing, if the states go to B, I set my current target to B, C. Um, because it's possible in this, if we keep the analogy of a multi-part Boolean, it's possible that none of them are true. Only one could be true at a time, but it's possible that they're all false. And so we've got a default here. So if no one set anything, then by default, I'm gonna say, well, at least go to point A. Sometimes in, a, in this, it'll just be blank and you won't do anything. Um, but it's good to have a safety on some of these. So saying, look, if no one told you where to go, go to point A. And then all I do is the same single line of code because all I'm doing is changing this variable, saying, hey, agent, your destination is whatever the current target is. Done. So that's that enum. Now I've got another one uh, that I might even have open here. I don't see it. Control point. There we go. Nope, I moved it. Cool. All right, so I've got another another uh, deal on each of the boxes called patrol point, also using enums slightly differently. So I've got a patrol point. This gets the on trigger enter when my cowboy comes through. So I use the enum as a way in this case to say, which one are you? I've written one script. The script can either know that it is point A or point B or point C. And so I created a, another enum, which again, this is zero, one, and two. Um, and he says, look, I'm either gonna be, I'm gonna be one of these. And then this is what exposed it in the inspector. So public patrol point is my local variable of this new thing I declared called this point. And I set that in the inspector. And the only other thing he needs to know about is the smart cowboy. He needs access to that script so that he can change variables in that script. So I'll show you in the inspector again. So I'm on point C cube. I applied the patrol point. And with this enum exposed, I get a drop down to say, which one are you? We could use this for weapons. I could have an enum set up for you're a pistol, you're a shotgun, you're a knife. And drop a weapon script in, hit this and say, you're a knife. And then all the other stuff will work. So that's the setup in here. And then back in the code, um, I am switching. So if I look at the tag and the thing that just ran into my trigger uh, is the nav cowboy, then I'm switching on this point, which is basically saying, okay, who am I? Who, who did the developer say in the inspector that I was? So if I'm point A and the cowboy came through me, then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach into the smart cowboy script and say your new state is smart cowboy patrol state go to B. So if I'm A and the guy came through, I'm telling him to go to B. And all the way down the, all the, way down the list, if I'm point C, then I'm gonna say go back to A. So I'm using two different enums. Um, in, in the case of the cowboy, the enum is a state. You need to go here, you need to go there, you need to go, you're doing different things. Um, in the case of the patrol point, I'm just using this to identify which patrol point it is. Am I point A? Am I point B? Depending on who I am in the single script that is shared across all the patrol points, I can give you your next set of instructions. Um, so I'm going to probably add, if you didn't do anything like this already, even if you did do something like this already in the original um, Blaston, I'm going to ask you to set up some kind of three-part enum system um, for, a, for a nav mesh agent to do patrolling, just so we get the use of enums down and kind of practiced. 
um, pay attention to the the syntax here so i've got a local variable of the smart cowboy script um, that i'm referencing here i just drug the entire cowboy guy over where he's at um, to this and it looked through the hierarchy of dumb cowboy and it found the smart cowboy script that I'm trying to reference. And so that was cool. And so in here, in the script, it's saying, okay, I've got a local variable. I don't care about the rest of the cowboy. I care about the script. And so it's saying, hey, on that script, my local variable for that is smart cowboy. I'm saying smart cowboy, and I'm able to set its publicly exposed state variable, um, which I called over here, right? So I'm calling, this is where I declared it as public, which meant other scripts could access it and change it. So in patrol point, I'm saying, hey, I've got, a, I've got a reference to this script. I'm going to change its publicly exposed variable, but I've got to go through this whole dot notation to get there. So since patrol state, the variable type, like if I had just created a brand new class called string or int or whatever, patrol state is part of cowboy. So I'm going through this. So there's a smart cowboy. Here's the enum. It's called patrol state, and which one of those is it? I want him to say go to B. And so that's the whole, you've got to have all that. If I just say go to B, it's going to freak the heck out. It doesn't have any idea what that means without this dot notation context. Make sense? Maybe it'll at least make sense when you kind of sink in when you're doing this on your own. So I will add, um, use an enum for a nav mesh guy. Um, in this week's camera stuff. The other thing we can do here, looking ahead, making something smarter. Funny enough, actually, this, uh, this was part of the um, course, courseware. Couldn't think of the word. Part of the courseware for the Unity programmer, the professional programmer. Um, we use the same thing, the switch case, but instead of just like, hey, go to A, it, they were different, like literally different states. So I had, there was a robot that was patrolling a corridor. And so state A would just patrol the corridor. And so he'd go back and forth in the corridor. Okay. And then if he saw my player character, then we would go to a different state, which was chase the guy down. And so he would go after you. Um, there was using, yeah, it was either a Raycast or just a really, really big. Yeah. I think it had like a cone visual thing, like um, kind of like the camera cone. So if it saw the player, it would do this. Also, if I tripped another alarm, if I went through a laser trap in, in another part of the level, that would reach out to the patrolling robot and say, your state C now is go investigate who, and who tripped this laser. So if I tripped the laser, then the robot would leave his patrol area and come chase the player around. And so you could do a lot more than just setting current targets um, using these switch switch cases. And so that's this, you, um, I, I kind of borrowed the, the terminology. This you'll often see as a state machine. And so your, your AI or other thing will have different states. Hey, I'm in patrol mode. I'm in chase the guy down mode. I'm gonna investigate the who tripped the alarm mode. So you can get really complex in here with these different states. Um, and all you gotta do is in another script say, hey, set him back to this. I think there was a fourth state, which was like, he was chasing the player, he's investigating or whatever, but didn't see the player for a while. And then after like so many seconds, it would go back to a patrol state and go back to lurking in its hallway. So a lot of cool stuff you can do with an enum and a switch case. Uh-huh. Um, if, it was a, if it was based on a Raycast, yeah, probably. Um, or if it was based on just a rudimentary shape that was a trigger and the, the player is no, I did, didn't have the player intersect my trigger, then same thing. Start a cooldown timer and then be like, hey, I'm going to go back to my patrol area. So anyway, that's something to add there. Um, and then if one final note on the enums. I'm going to go back to last week's goodies because I also had an example of weapon switching using enums. So same thing, right? So here in this code that I handed out, um, 
I use an enum for I don't have a weapon, or I've got a pistol, or I've got a rifle, or I've got a shotgun. And then I've got them all set up. And then the input uh, on an update, I was looking for the, for the tab key. So tab was my switch weapons. And so in the case of I don't have a weapon um, in my hands right now, but I had unlocked the pistol, then I would tab two pistol and just go through this whole thing. So same kind of logic with the enum. One of these or none of these is true. And so switching all through there. Um, and then I did a whole weapon select here. So I was switching here. So in my, my case, I hit tab. I have nothing in my hand. First, I'm going to see, did they unlock the pistol? Well, if I went nothing in my hands, then I'm going through the order here. Then the first, first weapon up is pistol. So did they unlock the pistol? Okay, great. If they did, weapon switch to the pistol. They didn't unlock the pistol, but they had the rifle unlocked. Switch to the rifle. And so all this, like, if else, in the middle of my switch case, it got kind of goofy looking, but it worked. Um, and then... Each of them was determining eventually, hey, switch to rifle. Um, I don't think I switched back to no. Yeah, I guess I never switched back to no. Once I had a gun in my hand, I wasn't going to go barefisted against anyone. I was just wussing out. Um, and then same thing. So I'm switching on the weapon here. Um, and then set active, set on active, all that other jazz. So that's the script using more enums for different stuff than just patrolling. You were supposed to have last week figured out some way to switch between weapons. If you didn't get it, here's tech codes. So get that going um, and then just jump back to this guy. We have time? Yeah, we can try probably mess with the controller. So um, we need our split screen playing. We need our mini map. Oh, let me show you my mini map that, that works better. We got our security camera. I'm going to add in um, a new enum powered um, patrol, and then let me look at that camera. So let me look at the at the security camera that doesn't spin around and make us dizzy, and then we'll go back and uh, try out our controller instead of two people on the keyboard. I'll do the same while I'm thinking of it. All right, back to scenes. Scene two, level two. Yes, yeah, save whatever changes I did. Great. Okay, so here in this scene um, is where I'd set up my mini map camera. Of course, take forever. For whatever reason, I've got my guy starting there now. I moved him. Um, the camera is just following the X and the Z of the player. Um, it's not rotating. It's not a child of him anymore. I'm not. So the camera's up there somewhere. Yeah, I'm just using a script. So, and then I've got, I've got another camera set up moving toward a plane with stars on it. So it looks like my view screen is doing something cool. So same thing that we did with the security camera, security camera just now. Except I've got a camera stationary out in space, um, and I'm just moving this image toward it and then resetting it. Um, anyway, so the camera, um, instead of being a child of the first person player, I moved out over here. And then I put this follow player script on it, which is the one I accidentally put on the other camera. Um, and literally all he's doing, what visual scripting, get out of here with that nonsense. Um He's got a handle to the transform of the player and then literally an update on the camera. He's saying my transform position. Um, I'm following the player's X, retaining my own Y, and then following the player's Z. Really one line of goodness in here for that camera to follow us around without being a child that rotates and make everyone sick when they look at the HUD camera. So that's why I did that. All right. Let me go 
back to the real level one now that I've got alternates of it. Okay, we're back in split screen mode. Um, so what I want to do is just make sure that this works. It's on, I guess. And probably the best way to make your, uh, your player two controller work is to not have messed with the in, uh, input manager the way we did last time because he was already set up. So it was what, uh, project settings, input manager, and then so horizontal two, we did want to rename them so they're getting different input. And then um, instead of key or mouse button, we want to use joystick axis. And then can I give it, shoot. Try adding a new a new axis here. Yeah, this is actually going to be a pain because I messed it up. Um, let me let me. Well, the best thing to do is be start with a different project with the input manager and copy it from there. So let me just open a different project, any different project, um, and just look and see how it was, it was laid out before I broke it. So previously it, it had two different aliases um, for horizontal and for vertical, and it would take from all of them. It was already set up to work with a joystick, a controller, um, and or WASD in the arrow keys, all of it. And so um, what I did was I, I renamed them to horizontal two and vertical two um, so that they would be separate events. So that wouldn't this controller and the keys weren't controlling the same character. And so that part we needed to do to get a new alias but then i reset these and that's what i want to set back so motion from joysticks motion joysticks yeah now that that's open let me just copy from my own input manager here let's see what the second vertical oh this one's got a different They're calling it debug instead of just regular. So back to left, right, down, and up, it looks like. Let me just make sure this works. Yeah, you know, just got to go grab some coins with my weird head. So, it was just left down, right up. Um, so back here and make sure we're in the right one. So negative, shoot, I'm going to look at these side by side, I really do. Here we go. Not preferences, project settings. Left and then right, down and then up. Okay. Got to get the mapping alias down. And again, all those mappings are on the uh, on that page on Canvas. So down and then up. And then we can get the camera controls figured out another time. And then, hmm, bit of debug jump. Nope. 
Joystick button three was what they had set up for the default jump instead of space, which was up here. So we'll just try joystick button three on my jump two. And then according to Canvas, that should be what on my Xbox controller? Three is Y. Y for jump. That makes sense. Again, if you didn't remap the other uh, the other guy, yes, I'm moving up and down. Do not seem to be working. But I'm going left and right, and I can jump. So this is using the controller, and then keyboard still controls the other guy. So fine-tune that. We'll need to get some controls for the camera in from the second joystick and figure that guy out. Because right now he's got the same controls as the first player, which is the mouse. I'm not sure why up and down aren't giving me my up and down movement unless I rename something wrong. Huh? Yeah, up, down, for yeah, for forward and backwards, but it, it's not happening. All I'm doing is strafing side to side right now. because I didn't reset that. So let me just say, look at the joystick axis instead of key or mouse button, and that should fix that. Didn't want to invert it. But it is inverted. I did something wrong. So I'm going, I'm pulling back on the joystick and walking forward. But it's getting the input. Baby steps. All right, just invert it. That'll work. And then we'll just need to, and I'll stop recording after I point this out. So we need to get um, the fifth and fourth axis here. So we're getting X and Y um, as the horizontal and vertical. And then whatever this fifth and fourth is, is we're going to need to figure out for our camera. So we need to go into our camera script, make a new alias and map those properly. Just to remind you, so that's on player two. A camera movement had its own camera move script. And so right now, he's literally looking for the axis, mouse Y and mouse X. And so we just need to change that to some variable um, that we can set in our input manager. other one like this cam Y joystick axis oh, I'm the wrong one get out of your cancel so cam Y is going to be joystick axis Y which was the sixth which the fourth and fifth okay which one here we go 
Vertical is fourth, horizontal is fifth. Okay. Good to have maps. All right, so make sure I'm on the right thing. Where am I at? Too far down again. I'm in the wrong project. Let's just get rid of that whole thing. Okay, so cam Y, we want fourth axis from the joystick. And then we don't need to use the T button for it. Cam X, we're going to get from the joystick as the fifth axis. And that should be it. Let's try that guy out. We may have to do some inverting. Let's see. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't change the script. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so let me just copy all this. Since we're here, since it's not chapel time, we'll just keep going. All right, so I'll remove camera move from the main camera on player two, and I will give him a new script called camera move two, player two. Open that up, paste everything in. Definitely rename this to match the name of the script. Over copy paste and mess ourselves up. So now it matches. Everything else looks good. We just want cam X, cam Y. The sensitivity we can still have set differently. And we still use, just call it mouse sensitivity if we want. Let's just go ahead and rename that to stick sensitivity. Hit enter. And I renamed the variable and all the times I used it there, using that rename. Good stuff. So, now in theory, this should work. Yeah, I don't know what's going on because this, this, this play two for me had a lot of drift going on. Um, so we can, we can set, um, I'll show you the inspector in a minute if this happens. We can set some dead space, basically. Like you say, if you're within this much of the stick, yeah, mine is just going crazy. And it just keeps drifting back up. So it's working. Or it's trying to work. Well, let's get there now, because this is going to be a problem for everyone. So, um, for stuff with the joystick, back to project settings, and cam Y, cam X. Um, we can set our, our dead area. A little lower and so as it gets let me see if it'll give me a yeah size of the analog dead zone analog device values within this range map to neutral so if i'm not like really pushing it my i get kind of close to back where it's supposed to be at neutral it's gonna be like okay we're not getting any input now and so just making that a higher number um, gives us lower sensitivity on that and then this is defaulted to a thousand and only one of them was working. Let me just take off some of this other stuff. Cam Y, fourth axis, right? Vertical, fourth, yeah, that should work, okay. Oh, do I need to call that button eight or nine? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing to note, though, right? Like, look at these. These are axes. These analog triggers. Yeah. Yeah. So these these are these are digital still, um, for the most part, right? They're just on or off. But since these other ones that that are analog triggers, we get that this an axis, and so we can we can set that accordingly. So let's try this. As is cam Y, cam Y, fourth joystick, joystick. All looks good. I just set the dead space. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, it doesn't know where the player's at. That's, yeah. Good catch. Okay. You're the player. Stick sensitivity 90. Let's try that. See if that helps it a little. We're still just drifting all over the place. Okay, we'll play with that. Or we just we call it a feature. It's our motion sick player. This guy is trying to navigate this whole world, um, but he's got a really bad fever, and so he just his head's lolling everywhere. Huh? One too many root beers. Yeah, careful with that sarsaparilla, guys. All right. Well, so it's getting the input. We just need to clean it up and not drift all over the place. But we can play different sensitivity settings on both the script and in the input. Um, but that's it. So we got a joystick working ish mostly for that player um, we'll have to go in and we could also one that we didn't do was give player two um, weapons so give him a different button right same thing so it'll be a joystick button y is already set to jump so make i don't know make x the firing button and so that's going to be button two from the joystick yeah use yeah use the triggers and buttons for sure that's that's fine um, and then same thing up here, right? So it's slightly different mapping, mostly the same, um, but different, different layout, different things. So cool. Have fun with that. Um, I will be checking for the second player using some kind of joystick input. Um, if you don't get the, the drift of the camera perfectly fixed, that's fine. If you do get it perfectly fixed, let us know what the heck you did in the discord. Cool. All right. Have fun with this week. Um, we will actually be starting an, a new project next week. Three weeks of, of pro builder levels. We'll, we'll build new levels next week. Do something else. But have fun.